students and welcome again to today's lesson as we are going to be checking Fourier series that is from the NEC past papers. So my name is Mr. Ngige. Uh, kindly remember to subscribe, share and also comment on how these lessons are being helpful to you. So we jump right in and we have our question here. This is question number 7 in the 2022 November series. And you are told to de uh, determine the Fourier cosine series of the function defined uh, by h uh, t uh, of x uh, of t sorry from 0 to 0 to pi that is your range from 0 to pi so our solution now for such a case this question is just simple it's just direct form because you've been told what to find you've been told to find the what the cosine series so this means what this means that this function is an even function so if it was a Fourier sine series then we'll, uh, we'll be finding what only uh, the odd part of it. So now this one is a, an even function, so this can be defined by. So we're going to be finding two things, a naught and a n. So generally, so if it is an even function, so we we'll just get our a naught. So our function will be defined by that. Then our n from one to infinity. Then a n cos uh, n pi. So since we have our variable here is t then t over, uh, over l. So our function will be written, our Fourier series will be written in this form. So in short, we're going to be finding a naught and a n, right? Now, uh, so what will be your l in this case? So we know our pi is just a constant. Now what is our l? Your l, your value lies from zero. Since it's an even function, it will lie from zero to pi. So your l will be pi, right? Pi. So your L is pi. So in short, it's going to be given by a naught over 2 plus summation from n equals to 1 up to infinity, then a n, then cos n. So if your L is pi, and your pi and your pi will cancel out, it remains what? It will remain with t. So now we find our a naught and a n. So a naught. A naught when our function is even will be given by 2 over L. And our L is pi in this case. So 2 over pi from 0 to our value L. So our value is from 0 to 0 to pi. Then your function ft. ft dt. Right? And now in our case here, our function is h. Is h. So yes, I write that. So a naught be given by 2 over pi from 0 to pi. So what is our function? Our function is t. So t d t. So integrating this, so we have 2 over pi. Uh, integrating uh, t, we get t squared over what? Over 2 from 0 to pi. Now you're putting your limits. You're putting your limits. So when you put pi, you shall have 2 pi. And you have what? Pi squared over over 2. And when you put your 0, the one of these becomes 0. So we just simplify a function to become this, so the 2 and the 2 will go. You have a pi and you have 2 pi here. So this cancels to that. And you get your value for a naught is given as pi. Now, let's come to the second part. Now we find our a n. So, uh, just start from the top. So our a n. The value of a n, how do you find the value of a n? a n is found by 2 over pi, so that is 2 over l generally, but now we have our limits given in terms of pi, so 2 over pi from 0 to pi. Then your function, your function t, be given your function t, right, then cos, then cos n t. Here, uh, integrate that with respect to what? With respect to b t. So, uh, with respect to t. So, we have our a n given by 2 for pi. Now, uh, even without going further, now let's analyze this function here. So, this, if you check this, these are two functions which have been multiplied together. We have a function of uh, this uh, t and we have a trigonometric function here, right? So when you have two functions multiplied together, they're not the same. Uh, one is a, is a polynomial and the other one is a trigonometric. Then we use by integration by 
parts. So integration uh, by parts. And now what is the formula? The formula is given by u dv, the integral of u, uh, u dv is given by u v minus the integral of v d uh, v d u. So in this case we shall let one uh, one function to be u, the other one to be dv. So we will write our functions in this form. So one of them will be u. So we let we say let our u to be t, right? Then our dv is everything that remains, which is given by uh, cos n t d t. So what do we need here? We need du. We need u prime, right? We need the u prime. Uh, that is a du. Du. So differentiate, uh, differentiate this function. Uh, so find du dt, which will just be given by one. Then remember, we have du dt is given by one. But now we take this dt here, so that we just remain with du on the left hand, left hand side. So we get one d dt. That is one dt. One dt is just the same as dt because one times anything just gives you the same. So we have du is equal to dt. Now in this case here we need to find our v. Remember we need to get everything that we need in this on uh, the right hand side. We have our u. We have our uh, we don't have our v, so we need to get our v. So we need to get our v. We also already have gotten our what? Our du. So for you to get your dv, you integrate this function. So this will be integrated. You integrate the function uh, dv, you get uh, value for v. So when you integrate cos, what do you get? You get sine, which is positive, right? So sine nt, then drop the constant. So our constant in this case is what? It's n. So we have over n. Okay? So now we have everything we need. We have our u, we have our dv, we have our v, and we have our du. Therefore, we now replace everything in this formula. So our function is just given by this. You can just say uh, u dv. Now remember, there's a constant here, so so that we don't forget the constant. This two over pi. Then u, which is given by t. Then v here, which is sine n t uh, n t over n. All right. Then subtract the integral of v, which is sine nt over n. Uh, then du, what is our du? Just dt, right? So dt. Then the whole of this now under our limit from 0 to what? From 0 to pi. So therefore, we can now integrate this function again. So we just have equals 2, 2 over pi. Just remain with t sine of n t, then we have about over, over n. Then integrating sine, you get the negative of what? Negative of cos. So when you have a negative here, so what will we have? A positive. Alright? Then cos n t. Then drop another n. You have, already have a singular n, then drop another one. You have n squared. Right? Then all of that. 0 to, from 0 to pi. So therefore, from here we can get our values. Now replacing our limits. Sine of n pi is 0. Sine of 0 is also 0. So replacing any value of sine, we say that value becomes 0. Alright? So we only remain with the cosine function here. So we shall remain with the cosine function because this, when we replace pi, Sine pi, whichever value becomes 0. Sine 0 just becomes 0 again. So therefore, we have 2 over pi, right? Then we remove this constant outside, so we we'll have n squared. So we remain only with the function of cos inside. So we have cos. Now insert our limit, our upper limit is pi, we have t. Then subtract the lower layer, the inserting our value being 0. So we have the cos of Zero. What do we know? We know that the cos of pi t is just, is just the same as uh, that value there. So we can replace this value and we know our cos of zero is our cos of zero 
is 1, right? So you can just have 2 over pi n squared, right? Then uh, negative 1, then n, then you subtract 1. So that is the general that is the general expression for a n. That is the general expression for a n. Now we find the values when n is positive, when n is odd, and when n is even, right? Now we come and say when n is odd, we shall have now replacing value one. Let's take one. So negative one raised to the power one. What do we have? We have negative one. Negative one minus one gives you negative two. Negative two times two we have. So when n is odd, we we'll have a n given by negative four over pi n squared. Now when n is even, when n is even. What is our value for a n? Now replacing an even value here by two. So this one square becomes positive. Now one minus one gives you zero, and anything that zero is zero. So therefore, when your value of n is uh, uneven, then you have your n being uh, being zero. So therefore, now we can write the Fourier series. So our h t will be given, which is supposed to be given by a naught over two plus the summation from n is equal to one up to infinity. Our a n then cos of n t. Now we just replace our values. Our uh, n naught we have found it to be what? To be pi. So we shall have pi over, shall have pi over 2. Then plus the summation from n equals to 1 up to infinity. Now our a n value is only when it is uh, odd. So we have negative 4 over pi <coughs> n squared. So then cos n, cos n t. This is just given again by pi over 2. We can remove negative 4 over pi outside. So we have negative 4 over pi because it is a constant. Then our value ranges from n equals to 1 to infinity. But now what we know? We know our values of n are only odd numbers. So we can write this value here as an odd number. So and we know an odd number can be represented by what? 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1. So we just see 1. Remember we remove this and this outside. So we have 1 in the numerator over 2n minus 1, then you see square. This just illustrates that this one is an odd, our value of n is supposed to be an odd number. Then our name you say cos, uh, again here since we have our n here, and then it is 2n minus 1, then we have what? We have t. So in general, the Fourier series will be given by that, or we can even expand it and just write the exact value, which you just the same as saying, pi over 2. Now, can have our first value when n is 1. So when n is 1, we shall have 4, then pi. So 1 squared is 1, and we shall have cos of what? Cos of 1t, which is just t. Then you have minus 4 over pi. The next odd number is 3. Then we shall have 3 squared, then cos 3t. Then minus 4 over pi, the next odd number is what? It's 5. So 5 squared, then cos 5 t plus this one okay so expressing it in this form or this form both are both are correct now so we check uh, 7b we are given a function defined uh, function gt so over period 2 so now we are supposed to sketch the function in the interval from negative 3 up to 3 then we determine it 6 so you can check the solution so sketching the function. So sketching the function, you just determine your end point, right? So when uh, when t is negative one, t is negative one. What is your function gt? What will be your value of gt? So divide, uh, put negative one here. So negative one, negative. So it will be positive, positive one. Then when t equals to zero, so replace zero here. Your gt will be will be zero. Now when t is 0 again, when t is 0, therefore your gt will also be 0. When t is 1, uh, when your function t is 1, replace 1 here. So when t is 1, your gt is also, is also 1. So therefore, sketching this function, so we have all of those. So you can just sketch it here. Anyway. So when your t is negative 1, so we have gt is your function. Then you have the limit of t. So 
you have the limit t. So when t is negative 1, your value of dt is 1. So you can see your value 1 is here. So negative 1, 1, uh, 0, 0, so you have a point here, 0, 0 again, then you have 1, 1. So this one is 1, then you shall have 1. So joining the endpoint, you shall have a function there. But now we are going to draw the sketch from negative 3 up to 3. So you can just put an extension here. Just put an extension then. So if this one is negative 1, we'll have negative 2 there. We'll have, uh, here we'll have negative uh, negative of 3. Then we have positive. So then we'll go down. Then up. We'll have negative 2. We'll extend this. we have 3 there. So your extension from uh, so this function extended from negative three uh, in the interval of negative three to three will be represented by that. So now we come to determining uh, its series. So first of all, you always need to uh, analyze your function that you've been given. You can always check if the function is even or or odd before evaluating because when you determine if it is even or odd, it uh, saves you time of determining all the values a naught, a n, and b n. So in our case here, we check our function. So if we check this function, you can see that the function is symmetrical on the y-axis. That is, if you have this as the y-axis, if you flip this function, the function on the negative side, if you flip it, it will lie directly on this other line. And when that happens, we say that that function is an even, it's an even function. So therefore, we need to get two things. We just need to get our a naught and our a. So only the two, and we so so now so gt in general therefore will be given by so g a function of gt will be given by a naught over two plus summation or n equals to one up to infinity. Then you determine your a n. Then cos uh, n by t then over n. So we need to uh, determine what our l is. So, so our L basically will just be 1 because L is always half of the total of the whole period. So our period here is 1. Our period here is 2, sorry. So the half of 2 is just 1. So we given by 1. Alright. Now we're writing the whole of this. We are having the value of L. We just have. Just have gt now just be given by a naught over 2 plus the summation from n equals to 1 up to infinity a n then the cos then n um, n pi t what is our value of l our l is 1 so in the side over 1 which is just the function so the function will be expressed in that form so therefore we need to get a naught and a n so a naught a naught is given by 2 for an even function. Remember this one is special for an even function. So it is gotten by 2 over L. So 2. What is our L? Our L is 1. Then from 0. So in our case, we are only going to be dealing with the function from which is on the positive side. So the limit of the function from on the positive side will from what? From 0 to 1. And what function is from 0 to 1? Is the function what? GT equals to T. Alright? So from 0 to 1, that is the half part, so uh, this one will run from 0 up to 1, and the function from 0 to 1 is just t, so we'll give it by t, d, t. So now, I'm getting that, we shall have 2, then this one will be t squared over 2, then from 0 to, from 0 to 1. So replacing uh, the upper limit, 1 squared is 1, and we have a half, so 2. Then we have a half, uh, we just have what? We just have one as a solution. So, <coughs> when it's two, write it correctly. So, two, so the two and the two cancels out. When you put these ones uh, to be equal to zero, the whole thing becomes zero. So, our value for a naught is just given by that. Now, let's come to a n. A n again will be given by two over l, which is just two over l. Our l is what? It's one. Then from 0 up to 1, then t, that is your function, g, uh, gt, 
then cos cos uh, n pi t uh, over l. So, but our l is, is just one, and the what? The t. And again, we can see these uh, two functions which have been multiplied. So, we shall use the uh, integration by parts. So, by parts. So, it's, uh, this one shall be integrated by by parts. So remember by parts we need to get what? By parts we know is given by u dv uv minus the integral of v d of what? u v. So we can let so you can just note this somewhere because I will grab it. Okay, so now we need to get our u, we need to get our v, we need to get our dv. So we let our u to be t our dv to be everything that remains so we will be given by cos n pi t d what? dt then du is just formed by differentiating this function which is uh, given by 1 dt 1 dt and anything times 1 gives you the same function so 1 dt is just the same as dt then how do you get v? you just integrate this function uh, because this one is a differential function already, it's already a derivative. So for you to go back to V, now integrate. When you integrate, of course you get what? Uh, you get sine. So this one is, gives you sine n pi t. But remember, your n and your pi are constants. So divide by the constants. So n pi. So now you have your values. So now replacing them. You know, so the derivative of t cos uh, n by t so remember it's from 0 to 1 and we have a constant 2 out here it has been given by 2 outside there so what is our u? our u is t what is our v? our v is sin n by t then what? n by then subtract the integral of v the integral of v so this sin n by t over n by then du so it is v du so our du is just d dt then all of that from 0 to from 0 to 1 so now we expand that just we have so you shall have 2 right now we have sine at t we have sine n by t and about n by then subtract what is the integral of sine it gives you negative of course negative of course and we have a negative here so we have it will turn to be a positive okay then you have cos n by t over now remember we have n pi then we drop another n pi so we shall just have n pi and just write it maybe in that form Okay, then over. Now all of that, our limit ranges from 0 to 0 to 1. Now, so we have, now we know one thing. When you now we put our limits, we know when you put 1, uh, when you put the value 1, sine of n pi will just be what? This part here will just become a 0. Okay, that part will become a 0. So it just remain in this part here. So remain, uh, remain with the cosine function only in this part. So you shall have 2. Now, uh, you now input your values. You can remove these ones again. This one again is a constant. So you can just have uh, n squared pi squared on the outside. Right? You have that part. <coughs> then we know. So we shall have cos n pi. When you put a value to be, to be 1. Then, uh, when you put your value to be 0, you shall have what? Minus cos of 0. And cos of n pi is just represented by what? Negative 1 raised to power n. So, it will be 2 over, uh, we can just say, pi squared n squared. Then, into brackets, negative 1 raised to power n. What is the cos of 0? Cos of 0 is 1. So, now, we can find our values, therefore, when n is positive, or when n is odd, and when n is even. So when n is odd, what will be your value of a n? So let's say we put 1 here. So 1, uh, negative 1 raised to power 1, this is negative 1. Negative 1 minus negative, uh, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 
equals to gives you negative 4 then all over uh, n um, pi squared then n squared then when n is even when n is even what will be your value of a naught so your a n will just be just be 0 Okay, because we have we'll, uh, this one, this term here will become positive, then 1 minus 1 gives you 0. So, therefore, we can now write our series. So, we have our value, our uh, general value uh, of a n, and we have our value for uh, our value for a naught. So, the series therefore can be written as <coughs> so you can just uh, you can just have it here. Therefore, the general Fourier series will be given by, which you say, is just given by a0 uh, or 2, then plus the summation from n equals to 1 up to infinity, then a n cos n pi n pi t. So, therefore, this will be given by what is our value of a0? Our value of a0 was 1. So, it is 1 over 2, then plus, and write the summation sign from n equals to 1 up to infinity. Then what is our value, the general value for a n is just given by negative, negative 4 over pi squared n, pi squared n squared. Uh, then what do we have there? Then we have cos uh, n pi n pi t. So we can remove negative uh, 4 over pi squared outside. So we shall have a half plus, uh, so it will be negative, sorry. Have negative so minus 4 over pi squared and the summation for n equals to 1 up to what? Up to infinity. But remember this one is only valid when our values are odd. So we can represent this n squared as an odd number. So we shall just say 2n minus 1 and we say what? Then squared. Right? So we need to check the difference. Yeah, so so we have that. So this represents uh, an odd number, right? Then one, we have that, then cos, then again 2n minus 1, then you say pi what? Pi t. And that is your general representation of the Fourier series gt. Or again, uh, in simple form, again you can just have it as uh, we have a half. Writing each term individually, it will just be minus 4 over pi squared. Now when n is 1, so you can have when your value of n is 1, uh, we are just going to have cos, cos pi t. Then the second one is minus 4 over pi squared, the next odd number is 3. So 3 squared, then cos 3 pi, then t. And this one continues, so plus, and so on. So therefore, the general 